So what's the difference between React Native and Ionic React? Or when should you use which? Now, for one, I do have a comparison about React Native versus Ionic and also versus Flutter and NativeScript already. So you might want to check this out for my general thoughts on this. In this video, I'll just focus on the main thing that sets the two solutions, React Native and Ionic React, apart. So let's start with React Native. React Native is a project maintained and actively developed by Facebook, so by the same company which in the end also works on React. React Native uses React, but you don't build a web application with it. Instead, React Native code looks like this, what you see here, and in the end what you have here looks very similar to our normal React for web application, but it's not the same. Instead, what you will see here is that you find no normal HTML elements here. All the elements you see here, view, header, text, are imported from React Native or from custom components. Because React Native doesn't have access to these web primitives. Instead, the idea behind React Native is that you have these components for which React Native knows how to compile them to native iOS or Android UI elements. And that's really the big thing. React Native applications are all about compiling your user interface code to real native UI elements. Other JavaScript code, for example, your JavaScript logic for sending HTTP requests or for handling authentication will stay JavaScript. So that's not compiled, but your UI is compiled to a native UI. So you get kind of a real native app as if you would write it directly with Swift or Objective-C or with Java, but with the one important exception that all your logic JavaScript code is in the end just hosted in a virtual machine of that app, it's not compiled. But that's the thing with React Native. Now, Ionic has a different goal. Ionic, if we have a look at it, is actually two things. For one, it's a company called Ionic. Second, this company has a product, a library, an open source, free to use library, which is also called Ionic. Now this library in the end is just a web component library. So in the end, the Ionic framework is simply a, a package, you could say, which you can import into any application, which gives you a bunch of web components. Now, in case you're not sure what web components are, I do have a complete course about them. Web components have nothing to do with native mobile apps or with Ionic or anything like that. You can build web components, your own custom HTML elements with just JavaScript. That's all you need. And that's in the end also what the Ionic team did. They built a suite, a collection of custom components with a beautiful styling and of course also with some logic attached to them, which you can import and then use like a regular HTML elements in any web project. So in any web app you're building, that's Ionic. Now, the Ionic company has a different background though. In the past, when they built Ionic 1, currently we're on Ionic 4, but when they built Ionic 1, that was actually a library for Angular. So for only Angular, actually only for Angular JS. And it was not about web components, it was about Angular components in the end. It also mainly was about building native mobile apps so that you could use Angular and your web development knowledge to build native mobile apps. Nowadays, Ionic is a bit more flexible. As I just explained, Ionic itself is just this collection of web components, but the Ionic team also has another product, also a free to use library, which is open source. And the name of that library is Capacitor. Capacitor is a library that allows you to take any web app doesn't even have to use Ionic, any web app, and turn it into a native mobile app. How does this work? Well, it's not magic, and it's also not compiling your code. Instead, it gives you a, a mobile app shell and then hosts your web app in a web view inside of this app. So what you deploy is a real app which you share to the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store, but it's basically that shell with the web app inside of it. 
And actually, Capacitor is not just for iOS and Android, it's also for Electron, which allows you to build desktop applications. And you can also enhance your web app with Capacitor because Capacitor gives you a lot of APIs which you can use to implement things like geolocation or the device camera and so on. And things like the camera then even work in a web app where it also tries to access the, well, device camera if one is available. So Capacitor is really a project that can take any web app to the next level and also allows you to turn a web app into a mobile app. Well, and Capacitor works together really well with Ionic because all these Ionic components, which you can use without Capacitor as well, it's not a must use, but all these Ionic components are really configured and styled to look especially great and stunning on native mobile apps. Now, they also look great in, on a desktop device, but they also have everything built in to look great on mobile apps. They even have automatic detection of which underlying platform they're running on so that, for example, a toggle like this one looks like a toggle should look like on iOS and looks like a toggle should look like on Android automatically. So that's Ionic. You build web apps with it and together with Capacitor, you can turn this web app into a native mobile app. With React Native, you build a native app because your code gets compiled to native code or at least your UI code gets compiled. There also is a project, React Native Web, which allows you to use your React Native code to get a web app out of it. But the difference to Ionic is that you need this extra project to do the translation. With Ionic, you can just use normal HTML elements in your code. For example, here, you see a H2 in a paragraph element in some Ionic React code. And I'll come back to Ionic React in a second. So that's the thing. You build a normal web app with Ionic. With React Native, you don't. Of course, the advantage of React Native is you get a compiled user interface, which typically will offer a little bit better performance than the hosted web app, as you can imagine. And this might matter in some apps. In addition, React Native, of course, has generally its own approach, its own APIs, which it exposes, and it's also really nice to work with. Now, I do have a complete React Native crash course video, which you can check out if you want to learn more about it. And if you want to learn all about it, I also got a complete course, the best-selling React Native course on Udemy, which you can also check out to learn all about React Native. And you'll find links to all these resources with a great offer included below the video. So what's the special thing about Ionic React and React Native already allows us to build native mobile apps. It gives us everything we need for that. It's developed by the company, which also develops React. Why would we use Ionic with React? Well, maybe because of the ease of use. Ionic, since you build a web app with it, makes it really easy to build a cross-platform application for mobile and the web with the tools you already know. In the end, you will build a normal web app, a normal React web app. Your code will look like this. These special tags here are simply these web components exposed by the Ionic framework. Other than that, you work with normal HTML elements, you work with regular CSS styling, you work with all the browser APIs you know, and so on. So you work with React as you're used to it. And that makes building cross-platform apps super simple. You don't have to worry about the complex stuff. Unlike React Native, which of course has its own merits, but unlike React Native, you don't have to learn a new way of styling or a new way of structuring your layout or of navigation. Instead, you basically work with the things you already know. Of course, the downside is the potential performance disadvantage, and maybe you also want to use this new approach React Native gives you. Maybe you're also looking for a certain APIs which only exist in React Native and not really in Ionic or Capacitor. Then, of course, React Native is great, and there are a lot of great reasons for React Native in general, but Ionic React is a great alternative. It makes building cross-platform apps really, really easy. And I can only recommend that you give it a try and that you have a look at Ionic. It's an amazing project. Over the last year, I worked a lot with Ionic and Capacitor, and it's really simple and fun to build cross-platform apps with these technologies. And it's simply great to have another alternative besides React Native, and you can try them out both. 
have a look at them and then go with your favorite. It's amazing to have these options and now there is really nothing in your way to build a real native or even better, a real cross-platform application with either React Native or with Ionic React.